Hey everybody, it's Audrey from Audrey Approved. I'm gonna do a wrap up today uh, of some of my reading for this kind of read the world project that I'm doing. This is a reading project I'm doing with my aunt and my cousins. It's a bit of a, uh, of a family affair where we read a book from every country plus some, you know, disputed territories and stuff uh, in mostly alphabetical order. So I have two other videos in this kind of series. I do have a, a playlist, which I'll link down below. Uh, one where I look at the books that start with the letter A, <laughs> second one where I look at the books that start with the letter B, and then in today's video I'm going to do most, uh, but not all, of the countries that start with the letter C. It's a bit of a fun fact, but there's like, I think like 45 or 46 countries that start with A, B, or C, which is, uh, I'm not going to lie, a little bit disheartening <laughs> when you're reading in alphabetical order, because 45 books is a lot of books, and that's a lot of time, and so for a long time it felt like we didn't make a lot of progress especially for the whole first year to be you know entirely transparent so as of this week we chose books up through the letter k um but in order for me to do these sort of wrap-up videos videos on youtube i want to finish like the whole chunk of countries that i'm talking about and there's just certain countries here and there that I just never seem to be in the mood for. So for example, for this video, I had to finish Cambodia and I just kept putting it off. And then I started reading it and it just took me like three months to finish the book. And it wasn't even a bad book. And I'm not even gonna talk about the book today because I only talk about kind of highlights and ones that stood out to me. Um, but yeah, that just, you know, is one of the reasons why it takes so long to, to put out some of these update videos. If you're looking for, I guess, more recent updates, if you're working on a project like this, you can follow me on something like Goodreads. And I'll also link um, my cousin's social media as well, because we read very frequently and, you know, 90% of the time, 95% of the time, the same books, but we don't always feel the same about them. So maybe that'll be uh, something interesting to, to look into as well. So with that, I'll jump right in. The chunk today stretches from Cabo Verde down to Cuba. But again, I only talk about, you know, certain ones within this. So the first book that I want to talk about is actually from the Central African Republic or uh, CAR. And that book is Co-Wives, Co-Widows by Adrian Yabuza, translated by Rachel McGee. And this is a very slim little novel that I actually see a lot of people doing this project. They also read this book for, for CAR. Uh, and like the title suggests, it's about two women who are married to the same man, and upon his death, they find that they are both widows, and they might not have gotten along super well uh, when he was alive, but after his death, they find that they have to navigate certain things like society's expectations and, you know, the wishes of um, their husbands or their ex-husbands, not ex-husbands, dead husbands, uh, extended family. And so there's some commentary here about women's roles in society and uh, a little bit on, on corruption and politics. Uh, but overall, it's a little bit lighthearted considering the topic is about you know, someone that has just passed away. I think that this is a, a great option if you're doing, you know, this this reading project and, and are looking for a book uh, from this country. I don't know if it has stood the test of time for me just in general, but again, for this project, I did enjoy it. So I admit that I was a little bit nervous when I saw this cover for African Rice Heart by Emily Starr Wilkins. Uh, you know, sometimes it's it's difficult to find and source books that are uh, in English uh, for this reading project. So this is an example of we couldn't find a book um, from an author from Chad. And so we ended up reading a book by a Canadian woman who does missionary work in Chad. And, you know, I, I, I think that this author is, you know, very eager and she does try a whole bunch of new different experiences uh in her time uh in chad but it's still like a missionary uh memoir and i feel like the author is also extremely young like she was 19 when she did this and then maybe 20 or 21 when she wrote the book and so there's not, I would say, a lot of reflection in, in this sort of piece, and it does touch, touch quite a bit on, on religion and, and religious aspects, which didn't resonate with me, with me personally. So if you have a better recommendation for Chad, you can let me know. For Chile, we read When Women Kill, Four Crimes Retold 
by Alia Trabuga Zaran, translated by Sophie Hughes. And this, on the surface, looks very much like a piece of true crime. I guess it, it is a piece of true crime. But I think that this would work best for someone who is interested in gender studies and interested in maybe specifically Latin American gender studies because it is quite academic, a lot more academic than I thought uh, walking into it. And this, I would say, is, I mean, it's about four different violent crimes perpetrated by women, but it's less about the sensationalization of it and like what these women did and how they committed these murders, but more so an examination of how Chilean society viewed these women after they had committed such a violent crime. And so it's really a piece of commentary on, you know, what this kind of sensationalization of these women says about how women are viewed and valued in Chilean society. And so, you know, there's a lot in here and a lot of references uh, to Chilean art and, and film and literature, which as an American uh, reader, you know, does kind of kind of pass me by. But I did feel like uh, this was pretty interesting and again, uh, a little bit academic in tone, but still a, a lot of uh, a lot of valid commentary. I will give a trigger warning though, that there are some extremely graphic images uh, in this book. So uh, if you if you don't want to see like photos from the crime scene, then I would maybe avoid picking this one up. Now there are a lot of options when it comes to picking a book uh, for China. Uh, but for China, I chose to read One Child, The Story of China's Most Radical Experiment by Mei Fong, which is about the one child policy, which was in effect, which was in effect for uh, I think many decades, but it was sunsetted in 2016, which is the same year that this book came out, which actually I was a little bit surprised about because I don't know, maybe something about the cover. I just kind of thought it was a little bit more dated. Um, but this is a piece of historical nonfiction uh, that looks into you know the implications and the impacts of China's one child policy with regard to you know, culture and economics and politics uh, and you know, different societal values. And I thought it was really interesting. So I actually, I really liked this one. I think my two main takeaways from it were that forced sterilization was really widespread. And the second is that if you have the money, you didn't have to follow the rules. And so many of the architects of the one child policy had themselves you know, five or six children and they would just pay the fine. And so really the people that this impacted were the people uh, with, you know, the, the lowest income. And so a lot of the people in, in the countryside. But yeah, I think this was a really enlightening read. I wanted a little bit more uh, nonfiction, I guess, non-memoir nonfiction in my picks. And so I went with this one, but there are a ton of great options uh, for China. The Comorosian book is my favorite book of the books that I'm talking about today. Um, but I would say that it's my favorite in terms of how much I enjoyed it, but it's maybe not a perfect pick for Comoros, the country. But the book I read was A Fish Caught in Time, The Search for the Coelacanth by Samantha Weinberg, which I feel like I talked about in a different video, but at the time, at, at least right now, I can't remember which video I talked about it in. But this is about uh, a fish. <laughs> it's about a fish called the coelacanth. Um, that for the longest time was considered extinct and scientists were really interested in it because it has a whole bunch of these kind of extra fins and scientists wondered if it was part of the the family of fishes that kind of represents you know the transition from aquatic to terrestrial life uh, evolutionarily so some of our our oldest ancestors um and yeah it was for a very long time considered extinct and then lo and behold the coelacanth is still alive and you can watch YouTube videos on the internet of the coelacanth. It's a pretty ugly fish, but it does still exist. And so this book is, I would say it's more a popular history than a piece of popular science. And maybe my one critique is that I wish it had more like evolutionary biology in it, but it covers the discovery or the rediscovery of the coelacanth. And in particular, it looks at this one kind of young woman, I think she's a museum curator in South Africa, who, uh, you know, is friends with, you know, the fishermen in the area, and she's called to come look at this species that was pulled up in a net, and she, you know, thinks to herself, 
I've never seen this before. And so it goes into, you know, how she uh, took that specimen, how she preserved it, and how um, the knowledge of the coelacanth kind of moved through uh, the evolutionary biology um, community. So again, I really like this one. It doesn't spend a a ton of time in the Comoros, in, in Comoros. Uh, I think some coelacanth samples were found or species were found in, in that area. Um, but if you like fish or ichthynology, which I never thought I'd say it, but I do really like books about fish. I think I've read three or four now. Uh, this is a, a great pick and very, very readable. The Costa Rica pick was Natural History by Carlos Fonseca and translated by Megan McDowell, who is a translator that pops up very frequently for any books uh, written in Spanish. And this is a book that made me feel stupid. <laughs> um, it starts very strongly, in my opinion. It starts with the death of this really famous fashion designer in New York City. And uh, upon her death, this kind of mysterious package is delivered to this museum curator uh, that works at like a natural history museum in New York. And there's all this kind of mystery surrounding this, like how do they know each other? What's in this package? And then I feel like the book just goes in different directions. Like there's a lot of different threads and plot lines that go out and then, in my opinion, never come back in. There's a lot of different flashbacks. And I just, you know, I just, I just really lost interest in this book uh, the longer I read it. My cousin called it esoteric. Uh, I think that that is a very good description of, of natural history. I also feel like it's a little bit like academic. It's a little bit maybe pretentious in my opinion. And yeah, it was just a, a bit of a miss for me, but I do really like this cover. So maybe that's, you know, a redeeming aspect for natural history. <laughs> I know I've talked about this one before, but it is Aya. Life in Yop City by Marguerite Abouet, translated by, or illustrated by uh, Clement Aubery. And this is a book for Côte d'Ivoire, or the Ivory Coast, and it is a graphic novel. And this one, I must highlight. Actually, in, in each video, I have to highlight the books that were the happiest, because I know I've said this before, it's, there's a lot of sad books. <laughs> there's a lot of books where bad things happen to the characters. And I don't know if we're just picking them that way uh, or what, but um, Aya Life in Yab City was just a really fun time. This is, again, a graphic novel set in 1970s Ivory Coast during a time of relative you know, stability and affluence. And it follows three teenagers living life. Like they're getting their first jobs, they're getting boyfriends, they're dealing with their family members and the drama with their family members. And I just really enjoyed it. I think this is actually, um, I think it's actually a, a TV show maybe in, in France, um, but I had a great time with it. There's, there's three books in this uh, graphic novel series. I've been meaning to go back and, and pick up book number two, but I really enjoyed it. Great pick if you're doing a similar project. And then lastly, I'm gonna chat about the Cuba pick, which was Call Me Cassandra by Marcia Gala, translated by Anna Kushner. And I feel like this cover accurately describes how I feel about this book. Like, it's, it's, the vibes are the same for me. The book blurb for this was really interesting because it's about a young boy living in Cuba uh, who is a bit of a, of a coming of age story as he kind of navigates gender identity and uh, family drama and all that kind of stuff. But it was also advertised as like this young boy believes that he is a reincarnation of Cassandra. Cassandra is uh, one of the daughters of Priam, the king of Troy. So another child of Priam was Paris and Paris who stole Helen, uh, thus causing the, the Trojan War. But anyway, uh, Cassandra is a seer. So she, she's like a, a prophet, but nobody believes her. I think that's her curse. And so, that's just such an interesting mashup. Like, how did you come up with that? I don't know how he came up with that, the author. Um, but I just kind of felt like I wish it was just the coming of age story. <laughs> um, I feel like the Cassandra aspect didn't do a lot for me. So I'm not quite sure. Yeah, I mean, I enjoyed this one when I was reading it. I don't think it has stood like long test of time for me. I think if you're looking for very unique 
retelling videos so not your traditional Circe uh, or Song of Achilles then maybe you might like this or if you want maybe a little bit more like literary vibes I don't know this definitely has an audience for somebody I'm not quite sure it's me but I thought the idea was really neat those are the books that I want to talk about for uh, this kind of chunk of countries. Again, if you are interested in seeing like what we read for other countries that sit within Cabo Verde and Cuba, like Canada, for example, you can look at the down bar below and we can talk about it in, in the comments. Um, but yeah, next time I will jump back with Cyprus and the Czech Republic to finish up the C's. And then maybe we'll do like the D's and the E's, but I know I need to finish one or two more books before I can do that wrap up video. But again, I hope you enjoyed. And if you are also doing a Read the World project on YouTube, let me know. Because I feel like there's a lot of people doing it on the U on the Instagram community, but I have not found as many people uh, that are doing it on YouTube. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed again and I'll see you next time. Take care.